Hi everybody. Welcome back to Fossme Media. This channel is all about the FOSS. Today we're going to talk about how to hide your identity online. Due to the fact the scope of this topic is so large, I decided to split it up into a series of videos. The main goal is to provide you with a basic understanding of how and where your online activity is being monitored and what you can do to, and what you can do to work around it depending on what you need to do. If you're browsing the internet from home, or connected to a public network such as a coffee shop, or you just had one too many letters in the mail from your ISP. I hope this series of videos will help. We will go over a large range of topics. First, starting with browser hardening, followed by firewall configuration. After that, we'll be setting up a non-KYC email account. In case you don't know, KYC stands for Know Your Customer. After that, we'll be creating a static IP version 4 address, and then configuring the DNS settings. After that, spoofing your public IP address, followed by spoofing your MAC address, then installing Tor, as well as a variety of other tools that can be used with Tor to not only hide what you're doing in the browser, but system-wide as well, such as Kali Torify, Proxy Chains, and Proton VPN CLI. And last but not least, the Tor browser. If you're thinking that's a lot, you're right. But unfortunately, this is an ongoing and most likely never ending battle. But the good news is, depending on what you're doing, you will not need to complete all these steps. For example, here's a couple different scenarios. Scenario one You're on a public network such as a coffee shop and browsing the, browsing the internet on your laptop. Here, I would suggest taking three steps, and they are as follows. Number one, ensure that your firewall has been enabled. Number two, harden your browser settings. And number three, change your MAC address. As far as your firewall is concerned, configure with multiple profiles, one for your home network and another for public networks. For your public network, just make sure the ports 21 and 22 are closed. 21 is for FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol, and 22 is for SSH, which stands for Secure Shell. Both of these ports are commonly used and often open by default, which would give someone a pathway into your system. In your browser, turn telemetry settings off. This is data that Firefox sends back to its service about your device and browsing habits. After that, you can probably disable your cookies. These are little bits of information that your browser saves and stores, such as your usernames and passwords. Then, enable DNS over HTTPS. All these adjustments can be easily found in your browser settings, and in a future video, I will go through each one in detail. And last but not least, change your MAC address. This is your device's permanent hardware address and is actually physically burned into your Wi-Fi or interface card. Because of this, it cannot be changed, but it can, however, be spoofed. Not to worry, I'll show you how. After connecting to a public network, this address will be logged by the server that you're connected to. If someone else is scanning the network while you're connected to it, they will easily be able to obtain your MAC address. And with this, they can spoof their MAC address to match yours. Then whatever they do online after that can be led straight back to your device. This method is very common in what is known as a DOS attack, which stands for denial of service. In order to prevent this, you can install a tool such as MAC Changer, which is able to spoof your address in one terminal command. Well, if we're counting three, but I'll show you how you can turn into a script and bring it back down to one. If you're on a Windows system, however, there may be a few more steps involved, but still very doable. As far as the public IP address is concerned, you'll already be using the one that was assigned to the coffee shop by their ISP. So nothing will need to be changed here. If anyone gets a letter in the mail from their ISP, it'll be the owner of the coffee shop and not you. And as far as your private IP address is concerned, you'll be using the one that was assigned by the router of the coffee shop to your device. 
the address the address that you have been given will be taken away when you leave the coffee shop or disconnect from the network and will most likely be assigned to another customer shortly after. So this one doesn't need to be changed either. So to recap, as far as coffee shops and other public networks go, just make sure that your firewall has been enabled. Enable DNS over HTTPS in your browser settings and change your MAC address. And that would bring us to, bring us to scenario number two. You're downloading torrent files at home and have had one too many letters in the mail from your ISP. Here I would suggest changing your public IP address using a VPN service, as there are many of these to choose from. But whenever possible, use one that does not require you, does not require you to give them any personal information whatsoever. These used to be a dime a dozen, but sadly they're getting few and far between as time goes on. The one that I use is called ProtonVPN. I chose this VPN service because I could register the email without any KYC. As, as an added bonus, you can also pay for the VPN service with Bitcoin. But keep in mind that changing your IP address this way does not make you anonymous, as it only changes who can see your real address. Using a VPN service is a great option in a scenario such as accessing blog content or downloading torn files, but not for anonymity. If you need to stay completely anonymous, I would suggest using Tor. But unfortunately, you cannot download your torrents here, as Tor was not developed or maintained to transfer large files. And even if you could, it would definitely be frowned upon because the nodes that Tor uses are maintained and run by volunteers on their own computers. Well, what you could do is first install Tor, then use something like Proxy Chains, which uses Tor, to navigate to the VPN website. If you're on Windows though, you'll have to download and install the Tor browser. Then use that to set up your VPN account with your non-KYC email, of course. In addition to changing your public IP address, I would also change the DNS settings to use an external server other than the one that belongs to your router. In case you're not familiar, your computer gets its IP version 4 address from the DNS, or, or known as the domain name system, which resides within your router and is leaked straight back to your ISP. If you replace your DNS server with an external service, such as Google or Cloudflare, your device will request its IP version 4 address from one of these sources instead of going to your router. In case you're starting to get confused, let's recap. If you're downloading torrents at home, you will need to change your public IP address using a VPN service such as ProtonVPN. Then, modify your DNS settings to use an external server instead of the one that is in your router. Well, I think that about does it for the introduction. Please stay tuned for future videos where I will demonstrate all these methods in more detail. I hope this series will help you stay safe in doing whatever you'd like to do online without having to worry about who or what may be watching. Thanks again for checking out the channel and hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now.